Good day and welcome to True Footy Podcast 40. Long True time, 40 no Podcast. Say. It has, has it been a while? Has been that long. <laughs> yeah, I was taking the piss yesterday. Oh, yeah, we did actually do a video yesterday. Yeah. I thought you meant since the last podcast. Um, okay. Well, sure, this is a very special podcast. Yeah. Do, you, do you know why? Because the trade one's our starting point, I believe. Yes, as in, as in it's been two years. Uno. What you're trying to say is it's been two years yeah. since we started True Footy. Yeah. Can you fucking believe it? Bloody earth, mate. I couldn't believe it until I got the notification on LinkedIn. Yes, you do have it set on your LinkedIn, don't yeah. you? As do you. Oh, yeah, I do too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, true. Good call. Um, yeah, so two years of true footy. So we're going to try and get the hashtag two footy going on uh, maybe not Twitter because Twitter's a bit of a great Two footy podcast. True footy podcast and hashtag two footy are both okay. two really good hashtags we can yeah. go with, guys. But um, today um, we are running with a single camera again because uh, someone forgot the other camera. It was me. I forgot the other camera. I oh, sorry, I forgot the camera at my own house. I'm really worried I left the ca- yeah. I'm really worried I left the camera like on my lawn or something. And Probably not a- the smartest move considering where you live. I live in a very dodgy area of Perth, but uh, anyway, we'll see when I get back home whether I've still got a camera or not. But uh, today, of course, um, it is the second anniversary of our trade period wrap that we did 40 podcasts ago, which is crazy. So we averaged 20 a year. That's I was bad. on the other side of the camera for that one, I believe. You were, yeah. And then the podcast as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, today we're obviously going to go through all of the 18 teams and their respective trade period hauls okay. um, and try and give an analysis based on how we think they went. Yesterday, obviously, you and I did a live stream yeah. over in um, said ghetto area of Perth. And uh, it went well. We did, did about an hour's worth. Um, I wonder if you... Is that your dog going nuts? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he does that every now and again. That's cool. Um, if he caps up, I might have to yell at him, but yeah, we'll but keep going for now. Hey, Daddy, get off the dang roof! <laughs> um, yeah, but obviously yesterday we only had an hour and it was in the last hour of the deadline day. It was so more to summarise what had happened for people who wanted to It was, it. yeah, it was quite difficult to keep up yeah. with it as they were coming in. Th- it, like, for instance, Aiden Bonner getting traded to North. I didn't even notice that until after yeah. we saw I saw the teams in the room and I'm trying to think, why are North yeah. Melbourne and GWS in cahoots here? What have they got cooking? And yeah. Bonner, I don't know. I was like, not bad, North Melbourne. Everyone thought they were going to do nothing. Exactly, exactly. And uh, we will touch on that and a little bit more as we get down through the team. So I'm thinking alphabetical order yeah. today. Seems which is logical. What we usually roll with um, yeah. some kind of order. Sometimes it's alphabetical. Um, usually so, take turns on whatever teams we've picked. Yes, that's right. Um, but today we're just going to go through all of them. Actually, I just realised we have a couple of questions from the Discord that I wanted to answer first. So yeah. thank you to all those who supplied questions for this podcast. Um, Dave s- supplied a bunch and he's going to kick us off with the first question is, what is your view on the trade period in terms of length and coverage? And what would you do to optimize the period as a whole? So why don't you start? Well, I feel like the length's probably about right, I guess. Cause That's what I like to hear. Like the deals all, well, all the, well, not tough to say all the deals got done because there's a lot of stuff that was reported. But yeah, a lot of conjecture about tra- deals and stuff as there naturally is throughout this period. Yeah, someone, I think I can't remember who it was, but I think a list manager yesterday alluded, uh, mentioned that like the media only gets wind of like 70 to 80% of all the trade requests and there's tons that you don't hear about that uh, players actually request all, trades all the time. So. Yeah, like even Pitnet, I hadn't even heard of that deal until it was pretty much happened. Pitnet. Oh, was it Pitnet? Yeah. yeah. No, that one was reported on, but it wasn't really Yeah, it was one. reported late though. It was like... Yeah, I suppose. Came out just before it happened sort of thing, like a day or two tops. I guess so. Um... I think we've hit a good medium with it because we had trade week, which used to be one week, obviously, yeah. hence the name trade week. And then it got moved to a trade period that lasted three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Three weeks was probably a bit long. It was a bit too long because nothing happened in the first couple of weeks and it's kind of similar to what happened this time. Yeah. Um, but I just think it was a bit too lengthy and, uh, and the coverage was just a bit stale. So I think we've hit a happy medium now. I do think it's a balance. you need a balance because... the. The People need time. There's a lot of moving parts. They obviously yeah. need to figure out all these picks and points and yeah. get their math boffins That's crunching right. the numbers. I wonder what the players managers do, just as a side note. Like, for, for instance, West Coast and Fremantle, do they stay there for the whole two weeks? Yeah, I'm not too sure. It's that. an interesting thought, actually, because they probably hate being there for yeah. like two weeks or three weeks. Or yeah. well, they might fly home for the weekend. Who knows? Yeah, something like that. That's most likely, to be honest, in my mm. opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, I think we've had a good medium. I like the trade period. The alternative is if they could have like a massive trade window, yeah. like they do in EPL, where it's like the whole summer. Yeah, most trade. other sports, like even the NBA, it's from like the start of the season to like about February. Yeah. And there's a trade deadline day where a lot of interesting little trades and stuff happen. That's true. 
it would be I think it's more exciting, I think, having a dedicated two week period. But I think for the players' sake as well, yeah. they want a dedicated you know, yeah. two week period where they get traded because they need to know yeah. where their futures are. Yeah, a good lie. example of that even is James Ash. I was listening to his interview after coming to Freo and it was on it was the one on channel seven with like Brendan Goddard and he's saying, Do you know when pre season starts? And it's like, Yeah, it's probably starting a bit early at Freo compared to Collingwood, so mm. those are important considerations as well. Good point. Especially because Collingwood ran deep in the finals, so that yeah. means they probably start their pre season a month after teams that didn't make finals. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. that's Important to know sooner than later for these guys moving across the country. Good point. He probably gets a month less holiday than anyone else. Yeah, oh, well, they might they might ease him in. Yeah, because be he's honest. coming off. He's had some scrapings out of his shoulder. Right. Like yeah. Tidy up surgery sort of thing. True. Um, Dave has a follow up question. He says, "If you had to pick one, are you more excited when big players move clubs, or when a big name player resigns with his club after he's been touted to leave?" I'm probably I'm a person that loves to see the clubs be able to hold on and keep these guys. Mm. So it's good to see guys stick with the clubs, especially if it's like the club that drafted them, for example. Yeah, it's good to see them go. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, this, as an Eagles fan, this is a, I'm a good person to ask because I was way more excited when McGovern and Gaff re-signed with the Eagles than I was when Tim Kelly requested a trade. Was there much speculation around Gav leaving? Yes, not to the same extent as Gaff, yeah. and he did re-sign during the regular season, but the media. The media yeah. just built up this McGovern to Fremantle, McGovern to Carlton narrative, um, yeah. which was obviously, it was never going to happen. Probably more of a narrative. I think the gaff thing yeah. actually had something tangible to it. The yes. McGovern was probably more of a media-driven 100%. narrative to sell newspapers. 100%. But nonetheless, I was still more excited by those re-signings, I think, than I was when Ke- Kelly requested a trade to go. Yeah. But that's just me personally. Hmm. Um, yeah. All right, so we can get into some of these clubs, Bushel. We'll start yeah. off with Adelaide because they start with A. Seems logical. So they've um, they've been an interesting team, obviously. Been pretty crap the last two years yeah. after their grand final performance. Now they've had the exodus of players as a result of that proverbial crapness. Yes, so they lost bets. Ellis Yeoman, Greenwood, Jacobs, Jenkins, Keith, and a 2020 round three pick. And they've brought in Billy Frampton, and a number of other picks in the second round. So, overall, I, I was a bit worried about Adelaide a few weeks ago. I was yeah. concerned. I thought it could have been worse, the exodus. I yeah. thought it could have been a lot worse than who they did end up losing. None of those guys are world beaters at this point. Exactly. So, they've lost... There they've no probably saved a lot gone, of money. No lead gone. Exactly. They've yeah. saved a lot of money as well, even yeah. though they're paying for half of Jenkins' contract, allegedly. Um, yeah. They have saved a lot of money. They'd but be paying some of bets as well. Yes, probably. Bets. Most likely. Uh but nonetheless, they didn't improve it. To, to have like eight plays in their best 25 or so, or is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't yeah, count it. Six, six, apparently. Six best 25 players, I'd say, leave the club and not really improve your draft position that much. Yeah. I don't know if that's a massive win. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? A few 2020s, but they're two fours and a second, so the fours probably not... Yeah, but the second's probably the pick of that, really. And even that's not spectacular. So they hold pick four, uh, which they got through that Carlton trade with uh, the yeah. whole Stocker deal as well. And they have two second rounders. Um, but they're 23 and 28. I don't think they traded in this period, did they? Yeah, I think they had those. Yeah, I think they had those already. So um, the, I think you brought up a good point the other day, yesterday yeah. rather, about Grundy yeah, and yeah. how freeing up this cash for Adelaide might actually help them make a big play for Brody Grundy. I don't think they'll be successful, but nonetheless, yeah. it does free them up strategically. It's one of those things they should try, even if they don't succeed. Yeah. I think them getting back into the second round this year by using Jenkins to upgrade, I think it was a future third or something like that. It yeah. gets iffy. But um, they got pick 37 from Geelong. I think that was a big plus. I was surprised they got that much from him, but then, yeah, with picks, it probably comes out in the scheme of things minor, but yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. When people see 37 for Jenkins, like, no club wanted him. Why are you giving... Mm. You could have got him for a 60 or something. It's probably a perception, at least. Yes, uh, I, but I think it was like a future third and Jenkins yeah, for 37 exactly or something like that. Yeah. But Frampton was the only in for them, which I hmm. I don't know. Like know. He, he was a rookie pick, wasn't he? He's he was a pick 80. He's in the 80s right. in the National, I'm pretty sure. Okay. He's been pretty good in the NAFL by the sounds because I did a bit of reading up on him. Cause yeah. I used to verse him in basketball, so it's like, oh, how's he going sort of thing. Did you say the NAFL? I'm oh, sorry, not NAFL. Yeah, yeah not right. NAFL. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing I think they might do before they finish up their business is they might split pick four. Now, yeah. let's have a look at that pick four for a second. Yeah. That was the one they traded in the last stocker, year. Yep. So they've given up 
Uh, pick 19 and pick 9. Is it was it? 9, yeah, 19 was what Stocker was taking. Yeah, so Stocker and 9 for yeah. 4. That's actually looking for a, a good deal on the Carlton side. Yeah, things, I remember going, what are you doing, Carlton, last year? But I've probably mm-hmm. done a 180 on that and said, good job. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't necessarily shit on Adelaide for doing it either kind of thing. Mm. Especially because you would have banked on Carlton being not that good. Yeah. And Adelaide probably wouldn't have banked on themselves being as bad again this year. What I often see with people trading future picks is they often bet on themselves doing really well. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what Adelaide did. And, I, yeah, I don't think it really came off. Mm. Um, I, th- I suspect they might use that pick four and try and split it into two late yeah. firsts or something like that and, you know, give up yeah. 45 or something as well. Yeah, it's probably not a bad play for them, really. Get yeah. a couple of first-round kids in because they reckon the spread's pretty even from... Uh, other than Raul Anderson, it's pretty yeah. much even ball game to mid-20s. Yeah, that's right, in that first round. So, um, overall, I would I would describe their off-season as productive, but nothing great for right. Adelaide, would you yeah. say? Yeah, average par for the course. How do you think they're going to go next year? Where do you, What range? Just give us a range. Probably in that 10 to 14. Mm. That's where they finished the last two years. I'm right. inclined to agree with you. I think Maybe they, slightly lower if that's where they finished the past couple of years now. Though, so. Yeah. So I don't think like all those players leaving is going to cost them big, but I think they've signaled an intention to play the youth. Yeah. And they're going to take three picks in the top 30 this year. They, um, new coach got a, through the door. New coach, exactly right, who's got a little less pressure on him to perform yeah. now. He's got a bit of a clean slate. Um, they took guys like Ned McHenry, Chase Jones, yeah. haven't played that much football. They're going to get Have they them year. debuted? Yeah, I think I think Chase Jones is. Uh, yeah, Jones, played. yeah, Jones has played actually. Yeah, I don't think McHenry's McHenry played. hasn't. Yeah, yeah, that's right. McHenry, I'm still in bloody hell. <laughs> McHenry, hello, Mahoney, hello, McHenry. Good, good <laughs> time, yeah. All right, uh, we'll move on to the Lions now. So ins were Kalamachi, Grant, Birchall, Cam Ellis, Yolman, and some later picks. They lost Tom Cutler, Louis Taylor, and some later picks, and their round. They're, sorry, they've lost their second round for next year. So they go into the draft uh, with picks 16, 21, and 34 this year, which is a pretty strong draft yeah. hand comparatively for a team that finished second. Especially, yeah. Um, so they've got two picks in the top 21 because of the Beams trade. That yeah. there must be Collingwood's hold, uh, pick they hold. They added some depth, with uh, which I think is going to be important for mm. them this year. I've talked about how I think they, they benefited a lot from a good injury run and a yeah. good fixture this year, and I think they're going to face different tests next year just on the balance of probabilities yeah, certainly but even though i think they've done pretty well in this trade period in terms of consolidating that success they've had and sort of building to sustain it rather than trying to do something ridiculous to yep. try and get over the top they've sort of just yep. consolidated what they have had built on it and i agree so ellis yolman's a big body it, yeah. for depth as well um and protect some of the younger midfielders as well yeah. Virtual replaces Hodges, that experienced yeah. defender like we were talking about yesterday. Archie, I'm a little iffy on. He's playing as a defender now. Um, He's a bit of a utility, though. You could sort of, yeah. They could pick a role for him and try and build him into it sort of thing. He's a former first-round draft pick, too, yeah. as well. Um, so there is upside there. Nothing groundbreaking overall, but I'm also thinking they probably don't want to spend too much money on salary cap considering how many young guys will probably cop pay rises. Yeah, McCluggage will cop years. one, Hipwood will cop one. Yeah, Barry. Barry all these, yeah, yeah uh, I don't know what the contract status is mm. of these guys, but even someone like Witherden. Yeah, yeah. You know, these guys are starting to... Harris Andrews. Yeah, big time. He'll probably yeah. actually probably the biggest example. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, the Discord Bagel like is it. the username. Um, has asked... We'll do, will Brisbane do a Melbourne next year? And if not, where do you think they'll finish? I don't think they'll do a Melbourne to the extent Melbourne did, but they're more likely to probably slide a few spots and maybe be in the bottom half of the eight sort of thing, possibly. I agree they're not going to completely shit the bed like Melbourne did. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, maybe just pull the mic slightly <laughs> this way. There we go. Perfect. Um, I agree with you. I, it, I mean, a team doing a Melbourne is almost impossible to predict because yeah. they had such a bad set of circumstances where they couldn't get any players on the park for pre-season. Uh, lots of operations in the pre-season. Um, Bit of new personnel. Yeah, everything just kind of shut the bed. Um, so it's hard to predict Brisbane doing that. I don't think they will. I think you summed it up well. I think they'll be playing finals next year. But um, I just don't necessarily rate them as high as some of the other contenders, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But uh, yeah, so in that five, six, seven range, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Possibly four if everything goes right and have another great run with injuries. But yeah, yeah. The, well, the gap's pretty slim between mm. you know yeah. second and sixth this yeah. year. So, 
Um, all right, so we'll move on to the Blues, and these guys are getting roasted for... Deservedly so, I feel. Their trade I was roasting them a bit yesterday on the live stream, I must say. Yeah, so for all the talk they were going to bring in some big players, this is their time to climb Mm. up the ladder, push for finals. Uh, They went for Jack Martin, they went for Papley. Um, They went for Cornelio as Mm. well, uh, technically. But they ended up only bringing in Eddie Betts, Pitney, pick 57 and 70, and they lost Andrew Phillips. So they swapped Pitney for Phillips. Pitney's just a younger ruck. Yeah. Um, and Some a host of picks. later picks yeah. as well. So they hold on to nine forty three. So nine, I believe, was offered. Well, no, GW. Sorry, the it was Gold linked Coast. to Papley. It was. You're right. Sorry, yeah. so it was. And then when that that kind of that Papley deal, it seemed like relied on Danaher. Yeah. So Sydney were only going to accept nine if it was going to help them get Danaher. Yeah. Obviously, the Essendon Sydney talks broke down. So I would have thought by then they had no hope of getting Papley. They would have. They should have gone with their contingency plans once they... Like, St Kilda did this really well, I feel, with that pick six when they said, we'll do this deal with Freo and if they don't accept in a few days, we're going to trade the pick down and get everything else we've got to do to get done. Yeah. Which, uh, it's the same with... A very comparable situation with Carlton, really, I feel, because it's the first year Carlton have actually had these guys like Papley, Jack Martin, who are good players, Mm. want to go to their club. Yeah. And the fact they couldn't get it done Mm. is... Bad, I think. Like. Especially when Jack Martin's uncontracted yeah. as well, so they had a bit more bargaining power. Um, so it's it's alleged, it's alleged, mm. sorry, that uh, Gold Coast wanted Martin um, and 15 to yeah. go for nine and maybe a later pick for Gold Coast's, um, in Gold Coast's favour. Yeah. Do you think Carlton should have accepted nine for Martin and 15? They should have jumped on it. Yeah, I think so too. Especially because, like I said before, you're trying to get these guys through the door when they finally want to come. Mm. After years of bringing the kids in and having to go through the draft, now you have the luxury of being able to trade for ready-made guys. You've got to get it done. Especially if nine is not that rated differently to 15. Exactly. This year, which is, I mean, everyone's got their own different rankings, but mm. I would have thought this is the year to downgrade. But anyway, we, we don't know 100% that was offered. Yeah. That's what's being reported mm. was offered. Yeah, exactly. I was going to ask if that was if there's anything confirming that. Or was that just speculation? Because right. I had heard that. I can't remember if Soss actually confirmed it yeah. himself or if it was just reported. Yeah. It's hard um, to listen to every interview with every list manager. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, 20... Oh, so no. This, yeah, I was just going to finish up on this Martin deal. This is going to be really interesting yeah. how it plays out with Martin because obviously he's uncontracted. So, if he goes into the pre-season draft, mm-hmm. Gold Coast have picked one, so they can redraft him on a... I There's think one year rumours they have cap issues, though, Gold Coast. Really? Yeah, I've heard rumours of cap issues at Gold Coast. Yeah, I, I heard about that previously. Is that still the case? I remember reading, I was reading like people in the like articles and people yeah. commenting and stuff and it seemed to come up. So for those at home, those playing at home, who were probably listening to this going, how the hell could Gold Coast have cap issues? I believe the logic behind it is that because Gold Coast have to pay inflated contracts to get someone like Brandon Ellis, for yeah. instance, or... Um, or, you know, just even just to retain their current players, they're probably yeah. playing everyone, paying everyone about 10%, 20% over value. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously added up if that is the case. But, I mean, nobody's on a million there a year, is it? Whereas nah, some other clubs yeah. seem to have close to a few yeah. players over, or close to a million. Yeah. It's one of those ones a lot of guys aren't reported their contracts. on. There is a cap floor as well, so they've probably mm. given guys boost to get above that cap floor. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if Archie yeah. or something was one as well. Yeah. So they've kind of offloaded him. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just making that up, really. Yeah. Speculating. Um, but anyway, it'll be really interesting to see what happens with Martin because he has two choices. He can go to the national draft mm-hmm. and just enter the draft as a regular draftee and then it's up to the first player, sorry, first club in the draft to draft him. Now, Gold Coast wouldn't take him with one and two. Obviously I'm confident not, yeah. of that. I don't think they'd even take him at 15. Yeah. It's possible, but they'd be using their own pick 15. Mm. Carlton probably... Would take him at pick nine, but they weren't willing to trade pick nine for him. That's what I mean. I don't know if they would take him with pick nine. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see where he actually would go if he went into the national rather than the preseason. But so the motivation for him would be like, oh, I've got a much better chance of getting to a Vic club. Yeah. Whereas if he goes to the PSD, I don't think he's probably concerned just about specifically going to a Victorian club. He just wants to go to a club that he can see grow yeah. from an opportunity. Yeah, I, he's, I don't know. He's from Broome. He not doesn't have any. Home ties to Victoria or no. anywhere, really. No, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what his motivations are exactly. Yeah. But um, basically the difference for Martin, my understanding of the PSD, the national draft is, as we said in the live stream yesterday, 
if you enter the national draft, you have to sign the base contract. So you'd be making like what whatever the floor is, 80k a year. Mm. Whereas if you sign up, if you go into the preseason draft, which is a separate draft, obviously, you can name your own price, and then teams make a decision whether they sign you at that salary. Yeah. So that would be his motivation. He'd probably want to be paying for 300, 400k a year at least. He'd yeah. probably demand more in the open market. Probably five. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, possibly. I don't know if he's yeah. really worth it. Yeah, it's but. a weird one. But I think with the National, because you see a lot of kids sign extensions pretty quickly after they're taken in the National, which yeah. a lot of people yeah. say they involve pay rises. That's yeah. why they get these done quickly, so they give the kids a bit of extra cash. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, we'll move on to the Pies now. And there's not too much to say about the Pies because they brought in... Uh, also, I, we didn't project, sorry, where Carlton we're going to go next year. I'd say bottom six still. Yeah, I think they will be internal growth. I think they'll be at the top end of that bottom six for sure. Maybe pushing. I think just still. Out. I still think bottom four is a possibility. Actually, it's still po- it's definitely possible. But mm. I just yeah. think uh, they might expose their kids a little bit more, so mm. to speak. Because um, when T came in, I feel like he gave yeah. expanded roles to the senior guys to make them more competitive, which I think is the right move. Mm. But but I think next year they might push Murphy back out to a flank. I don't know. It's hard to predict, mm. but. Um, yeah. A lot of kids to get games into. I, I, I can see Carlton stagnating again. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, Collingwood. The biggest trade in, the only trade in they had was Darcy Cameron. I don't think he's played an AFL game yet. One, I think. One or One, two. One, was it? Yeah. Okay. Because I think he got unlucky when he was fine, when everyone else was injured and he could have got into the team. He was also injured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was permanently my fantasy bench run yeah, for I, ages. <laughs> I've had him on my fantasy bench for like three years because he was like 170. I'm like, yeah, he'd be good if he actually gets a game. Yeah. Um, they obviously lost James Aish and they had shuffled some picks around. Um, I think they've gained a second rounder for next year, so they're going to have some points <laughs> or a good draft position next year where obviously there's going to be lots of like academy prospects. I don't know whether they'll have it, but they could use the points to their advantage um, to trade with another team. Yeah. But anyway... The effect of the Beams trade last year is that they have no first rounder and they're struggling for cap space. And Grundy, obviously, is a player they need to sign up in 12 months. And Dugowie's up in 12, I think, as is well. Is it really? Well, yeah. yeah, there you go. And Moore, I think, still in contract yep. negotiations. So gotcha. Grundy would be asking a million. I think Dugowie would ask, but maybe not necessarily get it. Yeah, probably not. Probably and Moore's six, probably asking seven, eight. Yeah. So that's nearly $3 million for three guys there on top of guys like Beams who'd be on a pretty penny. Pendlebury is probably not as much as he used to, but probably still making a good bit. Taylor Adams would be on a big contract. They need some of these senior guys like a side bottom or a Pendlebury to start taking, taking pay cuts. Yeah. But, um, they probably are. Yeah. Because even with the Kelly deal, we'll probably touch on that a bit more when we talk about West Coast. The, mm. I heard West Coast players took pay cuts to get him in. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. you can understand why, yeah. but yeah. Um, but I was just going to say, so that they kind of had their hands tied this year, um, had to give up Aish because they've got um, yeah, a number of contracts to consider. The good thing for them is they were kind of gifted a first round draft pick last year with mm. Quainall. So yeah. they, they used like two later picks to, yeah. to match a bid for Quainall. Yeah. So they could sort of rest easy this year knowing their first pick is 35 yeah. um, and they still managed to get some draft talent in last year. So they didn't strengthen, I don't think. And I do yeah. kind of still have them behind Richmond and West Coast as a challenger mm. this year. Yeah, and GWS is around there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's 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 really the, all there is yeah. to say on Collingwood. I think they, I, I don't think it's a problem that they sort of rested this off season. Yeah, they, um, there wasn't too much they could do considering their cap situation. Really. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not right. like they could land another big fish. Yeah, that's right. And pick thirty five, you can still yeah. still a good hope of picking yeah. up a kid. So um, yeah, they kind of just sort of rested on their laurels. Collingwood. Um, yeah, so for 2020, I'm going to say top four, I still think. Yeah, they'll make top four. Yeah. Move what on. they do once they get there is another question. but Yeah. Yeah. So Essendon, um, another club that actually didn't do a whole lot. Um, so they brought in Tom Cutler. On they Dead did a whole Monday. lot of posturing. Yes, <laughs> they did. They brought in Tom Cutler and Andrew Phillips with their two players in. But they also didn't lose anyone either. Um, and their current draft pick situation is they got two picks in the early 30s and then a bunch in the 60s. So... Uh, that was based on the Shield deal, which yeah. happened 12 months ago. Uh, obviously, don't hold a first round. It's actually weird. It was a first and a second. It was a first and a second. Shield, so, where's yeah. their first round gone? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know. Yeah, me neither. Interesting. Yeah. Let us know in the comments where their first round went. Um, they didn't trade it this year. They must have traded it last year. Yeah. Hmm. 
Did they bring? No, I didn't bring anyone else. De- not Devin Smith. No, no, that was two years ago. Yeah, that's what the hell. Yeah. Jesus. All right, we are yeah. absolutely stumped on the True Footy podcast. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of embarrassing. I don't know how that happened. So yeah. yeah. So just to clarify, I thought my well, what our understanding yeah. was Shield was pick nine last year. Yeah, and the future and a second. second. Yeah. 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 Anyway, hmm. maybe I don't think yeah. it was. I know they got some of those pick thirties in in that Kelly yeah. deal, wasn't it? Uh, the pick thirty three, I think, yeah. was they helped West Coast facilitate yeah, that deal. Yeah, that's correct. But yeah, so overall it was quiet, and I think they spent most of this trade period trying to hold on to Orazio and Danaher, and they yeah. kind of did, um, whether through their actual good efforts or not, or just yeah. because they were the Orazio situation sounded bizarre. Yeah, Bizarrio. Yeah, Bizarrio, fantasious. <laughs> um, Yes, which we'll touch on because there is a question from Dave yeah. on that exact issue. But uh, overall, I'd say they added some depth, but uh, depth rather, but nothing more than that. Um, but of course, having no first round in, they didn't have that much wiggle room. And of course, Danaher is going to be a virtual recruit. I think he's yeah. played twelve in two years, twelve yeah. games in two years, um, and they turned down allegedly pick nine and a future first. That was what um, the Doro said. Um, yeah. was offered to them. Never pick five from Sydney, interestingly. It was nine and a future first. They turned that down, and I wonder if they're gonna, that's going to bite them in 12 months. Who knows? He's well, worst case, player. if he goes anyway, he's restricted. They can match. And, mm. But can they match, in theory? Because Sydney might have more cap space. We don't mm. know. Yeah. We don't know. Um, but either way, they get at least one first rounder yeah. out of it because he'd be banned one, obviously. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. Um, and yeah, they obviously they're kind of not putting themselves their eggs in the basket, but they're kind of um, really banging on him, getting a, getting a lot out of him this year. Mm. You know and I mean? re- and they even saying because they've admitted themselves, they sort of said he's fallen out of love with football a bit. They hope to mm. reinvigorate that love and passion for the game in him. You know, if he plays like ten games and he gets injured this year, mm. I, I doubt he'd go p- p- band one. Uh-huh. He'd probably not be a first rounder. It's hard Depends to on the offer, though, doesn't it? Yeah, but not just the offer. So Brandon Ellis obviously got signed for 600k on a five-year deal, yeah. and he got banned too. Yeah. So it's a little bit blurry as to why. Mm, age is a factor, I believe. AIDS. AIDS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a bit of a medical issue. They might but like investigate Dan- that. Danaher and Ellis will be the same age. Uh, like they're both. Oh, yeah, restricted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's eight years in the system or whatever. Yeah. Um. So the question from Dave regarding Razio is. On him staying, was that completely immature or is it a deeply complicated situation that required all the necessary thinking time to get to the bottom of? Is he justified in not offering a statement to Essendon and the wider media? It's his life. It's like, mm. I'm sort of like, I understand these guys have to accept they're going to be in the public eye, but at the same time, they don't have to just mm. open the doors and say, come on in, this is my life. Yeah. Sort of thing. They True. still have the right to their privacy. But they obviously acknowledge the fact people are invested and interested in their day-to-day life. So I, think, I guess I wonder if what Essendon fans take exception to is he kind of flip-flopped and didn't give a straight answer. Yeah. Um, but he's highly the first person to do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of happens at every club. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff we're not privy to. I kind of I tend to agree with you in that. May I, well, as a, as a fan, would you would you be thinking he needs to explain? Not really. I'd like, be like he's. What if Brayshaw? Let's say Brayshaw. Flip flopped around at at Freo and then re, and then didn't resign, but just stayed to the end of his contract. But would you want to hear from him? If there's contractual issues where it looked like he might do it again next year when he's out of contract, to be like, if you're serious about this, let us know so we can extract more value for you possibly yeah. while he's still contracted. I can understand that perspective as a fan, but mm. uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just say my impression of it is, is just maybe. Yeah, maybe he could have been a little bit more forthcoming about his intentions and uh, not. That was of weird. He around. fired multiple managers. He went through yeah. a few managers in the trade period or something, didn't he? And yeah. ended up settling on someone from South Australia, which made people think mm. he wanted to go home. Yeah. It's a tough yeah. one. It's really hard to us to answer this without knowing the specifics. Yeah, I've read a lot of innuendo about it. it seems it was a weird situation. Like. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if yeah. Essendon fans are. I guess they'd be pleased he's staying, but what's he got? One year left on his deal? Yeah, I don't know what his deal looks like exactly, but like, if it is one year left, as you said, I, maybe as a fan, that'd be more reason for me to be annoyed because you go, yeah, we could get more for him while he's still contract if he 
finally yeah. was decisive enough to admit he wants to go home. Because mm. wasn't that the big thing with him all along? Everyone said from the very beginning they reckon he'll want to go home at some point in his career, sooner I've, than later. I've, I've heard that from you. I don't. I don't know. I've, I've heard that yeah, from yeah, yeah. Sort of, like, not my sources, but like reading <laughs> shit. I don't have your, sources. Your people. I don't have people. Fair enough. Where do you think Essendon? How do you think their place for next year? Where do you think they'll go? About the same. Mm. Maybe a slight decline because other teams have progressed more than they have. But At times they do look as good as the top six mm. and then at times they look really, really bad. Yeah. And I know they had injuries towards the end of the year, but I've never seen injuries cause a team to, well, lose a, to a team lower than them on the ladder by 104 points. Yeah. That Bulldogs game, I've never seen anything like that, even just yeah. injuries or not. That I attribute some of that to the doggies being on the top of their game as well. True, but it was... Because the doggies are a team that if they... Everything goes right for them. They've got the talent to bloody do whatever the hell they want. They are very good, but 137 to 14 mm. was the score at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I still can't get past that. It's the most bizarre yeah. game I've seen in a number of years. Such an Essendon thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I I've think they'll be. I've said it once, though. I'll say it a million more times. Freo, Essendon, and Port Adelaide are the holy trinity of inconsistency. Yeah, yeah. They certainly are these days. Um, which is a good segue into Fremantle. <laughs> the boys. F for Fremantle. In, Blake Akers, James Aish, pick 10, pick 22, and a number of later picks, and they've gotten an extra second round next year. Including pick 69, giggity. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> <laughs> they lost Bradley Hill, Ed Langdon, pick 26, and a third and fourth round in next year. So they hold 7, 10, and 22 this year. More out than in? Mm, certainly. Brad Hill was a doig medalist, a mm. great player. They picked wings based on being wings. He probably would have been an All-Australian yeah. or in much yes. more in the conversation than he was at the very least. Yeah. He didn't he's even a great make player. 40, which was unjustified. He should have made yeah. 40. But no, he's a very good yeah. player. Um, Ed Langdon was a pretty good wingman this year. Obviously had yeah. issues with his ball use. Disposal. But other than that, the rest of his game's great other than his disposal efficiency, which I'd partly blame on Ross Lyon's tendency to not train skills from what people report. They reckon he's just... A, Teaches running and effort rather than composure mm. and skill. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <sighs> James H. What do you think of him as a prospect? I like him as like he's it was a pick seven. A lot of raps on him when he first got drafted. The mm. Brisbane situation when he first landed there. Yeah, that's true. Was, it was weird. A bit like it Gold Coast like back then. Yeah, it was when the exodus happened when guys like Yo Red and Aish, a whole bunch of them, it was all a, left within a couple of years. Yo Aish, Doherty, Longer, yeah. and someone else, uh, kind of Eases or something. It was yeah. Go Home Five or something like that. Yeah, and then Yo, uh, Redden was a couple of years later. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, fair enough. That, they kind of profited a little bit from Collingwood's cap squeeze, yeah. like we were just talking about and, before. Justin Longmuir's relationship with Aish seems to be a very big driving factor here in the interviews now that Aish has gotten through the door. Yeah. He reckons Longmuir's the best coach he's ever had. Yeah, right. Loves him. Yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I reckon the better player will be Blake Akers. I've always mm. been a fan. You know, yeah. you know what I'm like? I, I, wanted Blake I remember Akers. you wanted him over Sheed. In that yeah, which, which obviously would have been wrong. But then again, I do. I, I've off, often look at Blake Akers and I think if he'd come to West Coast, mm. Especially in the West Coast team yeah. it is right now, that could have turned him into a He could player. be anything. He could, I, I, I see a bit of Elliot Yo about him, like in terms mm. of the size and attributes. Like, yeah. obviously not Elliot Yo, but if yeah. he gets a chance to consistently be on the park, work in his game for four or five years. He's not quite as explosive as Yo. He's a yeah. bit more like glides across the grass, yeah. kind of like real classy, smooth mover. Yeah. I think, I think in time he will be better than Langdon. Mm. I'd rather yeah. have Langdon, sorry, Akers on my team, which is, says mm. a lot because Langdon had a very good year. Yeah. Um, so I do think that is a big win, and that's a bit of a blow for St Kilda. But I, then again, at the same time, I think St yeah. Kilda weren't doing a great job of developing mm. him. So the Langdon trade for me was a little weird. I think mm. we should have just pressed straight for twenty two, mm. like a straight swap Langdon for pick twenty two instead of including future seconds and moving out twenty six to them and do you complicating have, it. Though, do you have academy prospects next year? Next year, I'm not 100% sure about our academy prospects yeah, next year. No, me neither. Yeah. I, I, I never look more than one year ahead. But yeah. if Fremantle have an extra second rounder next year, that could be seriously handy for them. Mm. We've got a few second rounders next year. Oh, wait, we traded the St Kilda one. I you thought, traded yeah. one. You had three. Yeah, we traded the St Kilda for Ash, yeah. Um, so, in effect, you got a second rounder and a four-pick upgrade or whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah. I but that four-pick upgrade is likely to be wasted on a bid for Henry because yeah. you have to use the highest pick after the bid isn't it's it it's based on points and then you get a later pick given back to you if there's, oh, a, okay. if there's a deficit so it, mm. it, it is it does matter mm. um 
Man, so, okay, so you brought in two wingmen, you've lost two wingmen. Mm. How do you feel as, as about a potential of Connor Menager, who's been talked about um, as a listed free agent? Do when the name first came up, I liked the idea because I figured it'd be a cheap pick to Richmond, get him in the door in that age, that 22 to 26 age profile where we probably want a bit more yeah. consolidation. Mm. And he's had upside. Like, I don't mind the look of him, especially now that he could be a delisted free agent pickup for us. That means we don't have to spend anything other than salary. That's true. That's true. He's definitely worth a gamble. Personally, I think you're good with Aisha and Acres. I think Acres, yes, Aish, he's all right. Menager's probably a little bit excessive. I'd rather give the games to Liam Henry, even if it's on yeah. a wing or something like that. Um, you're going to have three picks inside 22 this year. I think mm. you'll probably draft someone you'd rather have a game than Menager, but who knows? Who knows? Right. Yeah. yeah. Worst case true. scenario yeah. helps peel out. Yeah. 2020. I'm a bit of a pessimist at the moment for Freo. I'm not going to lie. I'm not necessarily shitting on the moves and stuff I've done. They've done what they had to do. Mm. But I can't see us improving on what we did last year. I could see us going down the ladder a little bit as the kids yeah. go through some growing pains and really earn their future roles. So Brad Hill leaving is a big blow. Very big it blow. It is. He's one of your better players. Yeah. Very close to the, maybe top five at the club. Maybe Top three. Top three, you reckon? Okay. So After five, five from Walters. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably, probably about right. Um, huge blow for them. I think that will kind of be offset by the fact that I'm banking on your spine having better injury luck this year. Hopefully. Because at times, Fremantle looked pretty good this year when you mm. had the whole complement of players. Alex Pier- Once Alex Pierce went down, we were a different team, I felt. Yeah, that's very he true. He was the back general... Yeah. Even if he's not necessarily the guy getting 20 disposals a game and using the ball well, yeah. he's leading by example. He covers his man well. He's lead, talking on the field, obviously. Yeah. He was a big loss, Alex Pierce. I agree. He was in all... People would call, talk him up as an all-Australian back until he went down. Yeah, that's right. Um, I The other interesting point you just mentioned as well was Longmuir is a new coach. Yeah. He's got a clean slate and that might take a little bit of pressure off him to play the kids a bit more. Yeah. You know, the longer a coach has been there, the more pressure there is to not, to start getting wins and to not yeah. like, play the kids, whereas Longmuir is coming in yeah. trying to rebuild the side and now. So. All along, Longmuir has come in saying, keep the picks, I want to go through the draft. Longmuir, has he? Yeah, Longmuir has gone. Right. Another, he wants a bit more building before we... Interesting. Yeah. I thought I sort of rated our list a little higher than that, but at the same time, it's like, mm. now that Brad Hill's out the door, Yeah. Langdon even... Yeah, fair Especially because he would have had a pre-season with Long Newell who actually probably drilled skills and you could have seen an improvement from there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The Geelong Cats are next and uh, they were probably one of the biggest winners, I think. Well, it's hard to say winners. Are they actually it's a better tough, team? Yeah, it's I think toughy. they've broken even out of a bad situation. Mm. So Josh Jenkins has come in as forward depth uh, support. Um, Dangerfield drove that apparently a fair bit. He was... He talked to he put the pressure on Geelong to sort of try and get him in. Yeah. Um, Jack Stephen comes in, pick 14, pick 24, uh, next year first and a next year third. Um, obviously, they lost Tim Kelly, Zach Smith, and pick 57 and a third round of next year. So they scored big for Tim Kelly. They got mm. probably the second biggest trade ever in terms of what was spent for him. Yeah, biggest since Judd, I believe, in terms of value yeah. of points. Yeah. Um, so now they have two firsts and two seconds this year, and next year they have two firsts. So they have a su- seriously good position to mm. sort of replenish the talent at the Cats. As guys like Dangerfield, Selwood, yeah. Duncan, even he's up there. Harry Taylor, those dudes get older, yeah. Yeah, and Zach's, uh, Zach Smith was <laughs> effectively swapped for Jack Stephen, um, who helps cover that loss of Tim Kelly. Which Jack um, Stephen's the bargain of the century almost if he can mm. get right, like yeah. stay on the park. He's a, he's a star, full time best and fairest, St Kilda. Yeah. Ball gets lots of ball. He is like 30 or something, though. That's, mm. that's the only caveat. But um, but he's very good, like short term depth mm. to cover. And yeah. we, we've seen Geelong have the talent coming through, I think. Nothing yeah. like super elite, but they've just got good mm. prospects coming through. They're going to have five. A bit uh, like a picks. Hawthorne sort of thing when they were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they got four picks under 36, and then obviously we said two firsts next year as well. So mm. they're in a really good position in that respect. With Jack Stephen coming in, I don't think he's as quite a good a player as Kelly, but he's not that f- – well, his last – the last time he played properly before mm. his issues and stuff like that, he was like seventh in the brown or something yeah, like that. He's a, he's a great player. He is a very good player. So um, how, how do you think they'll go next year with that in mind? Now Probably in- not minor premiers again. I'm, no. I think they'll make the eight, obviously. Yeah. 
probably similar to Brisbane. I've, I put them in the same tier as Brisbane in terms of potential to perform. I think I have them higher than Brisbane, personally. Mm. I think I'm going to say top five. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Richmond, Collingwood, GWS, West Coast, Geelong. Huh? Probably in, no, in yeah. random order, yeah. but yeah. Um, I think they're in a good position. Jack Stephen is a really tough one, though, because he's obviously had issues. Mm. We don't know how much more football he's going to play. You know, if, if yeah. something like mental health, he could be fine for a month and then, mm. yeah. you know, he might not want to play anymore. So that, there was always a risk involved in that. Um, and it's good on behalf of St Kilda who kind of let yeah. um, Jack Stephen go for his sake. Yeah, because he, he tried to get out last year to Geelong mm. as well and that didn't get yeah. done. Yeah, that's right. But to let him go for virtually, what well, was it, fourth rounder or yeah. something, third rounder, um, early fourth or something. Um, yeah, it was a bit of goodwill from St Kilda, I think, yeah. um, which was good. But yeah, so I think I think we can all agree that Geelong did really well from a bad situation. Yeah, Jenkins as well is another player who doesn't look that good, but he's actually quite high production. Mm. Yeah. Kind of like Quinton Lynch, I reckon. Yeah, back in the day, Quinton Lynch yeah. looked like the most unco worst good. footballer ever. But he just put, pulled out the most fantastic career. And if you look at Steve, uh, sorry, Jenkins' goals per yeah. year, he's actually quite a productive player. He's kicked like the most goals out of anyone within 15 metres for the like, <laughs> current era, I think. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Um, so he's good at more of a traditional mm. key forward where you can just sort of plonk it on him in the square and he'll yeah. pluck it. That's true. Um, a bit like Hawkins in that sense. Actually, Hawkins plays a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. So Geelong are obviously loading up for the here and now as well with... Yeah. with Jenkins and Stephen, who are both over 30. Well, Jenkins is over 30, I'd say, right? Ballpark 30, yeah, I ballpark think. Ballpark 30 yeah. is probably a good bet, yeah. Um, so, yeah, all in all, very successful, I think, for them. Um, now the, next is a team that I do quite enjoy talking about. That's the Gold Coast Sun, because <laughs> the Gold Coast Sun's really in sparked this, like, manager mode or football mm. manager kind of part of me, which yeah, wants ball. to, like, take a team from the bottom to the yeah. top. So I always love talking about potential trades. Yeah, but yeah. they've done pretty much what I would have tried to do if I were them this year, mm. which is bring in mature talent. They've overpaid a little bit for Ellis, and I think yeah. it's still good. Best 22 player in a grand yeah. final. Hugh Greenwood um, can offer a lot as a mature body, 28-year-old. Yeah. And um, the thing is, he's 28 years old, but he's not been playing football that long. People forget mm. he played four years of bar- college basketball in the States at New Mexico State. He was... Signed by the Perth Wildcats, expected to come in and be an NBL player and then backflipped and signed a Cat B with Adelaide and the rest is history. Yeah, that's true. Um, so he's probably still got upside even though he's 28. Yeah. Bizarre as that sounds. Yeah, yeah, I know what you Especially mean. Especially getting that. a consistent crack at a team like Gold Coast. Yeah. Zach Smith was the third hmm? best 22 An player. OG coming back Yeah, home. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And I think for the first time ever, they've got more players coming in than there are leaving, <laughs> which, is, which is bizarre. Yeah. Um, and they've also got a uh, second and fourth rounder last year. So they also lost yeah. Calamachi for former first rounder. Personally, I don't think that's a huge blow. He wasn't really, they weren't really giving him the opportunities to play, but from yeah. what I saw, he was, uh, yeah. They had that many kids here as one that sort of got mm. washed out. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, w- he didn't really ever come on. They've got four picks inside the top 20, including one and two, and they've brought in three best 22 players. Smith can be a fairly good backup to Wits. Yeah. Obviously, Wits is going to be yeah, the main yeah. man up there. Um, the only question mark on their off-season was Jack Martin, like we alluded to before. It could bite I, them I, here. I, I don't mind it, to be honest, It's because they're a team that's sort of bled talent. It's mm. good to see them take a stand, I think. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's just that they it might burn them, that's all. Mm. But, yeah, I guess it sets a precedent where they're like, the next guy who wants to request a trade out of Gold Coast knows it's not just going to be a little bit on a platter. Um, Dave has a question as well. Dave's mm. just pumped us with questions, which you love. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. You're a great yeah, contributor. A bit to of podcast. stimulus, yeah. <laughs> a stimulus package from Dave. Um, gross. Assistance <laughs> package, yay or nay? We talked about this a little bit in the last podcast, but uh, have you had any more time to reflect on it? I, I still think it was probably necessary, maybe not to the extent they did it, mm. but I felt they needed that jump start to really restart the team because the first start, first 10 years of the starting the team off, we've seen the results of that. Yeah. They were, work, they were working out of the mountables for like the first four or five years I've yeah. read and mentioned before. I think I've said this before, but I care less because it's Gold Coast. Do you mm. know what I mean? So the fact that I just don't feel like they're going to really put it to use. <laughs> <laughs> but like the one, that, the one that's iffy for me is the fact that they can just sign their academy players straight yeah. to this. 
because it sets a dangerous precedent. And what mm. point do you take that away from them? Because if Sydney starts to be able to, and GWS start to be able to sign any New yeah. South Wales prospect or um, their, through their academy, yeah. that's really problematic. That's a huge advantage. Um, Isn't even parts of regional Victoria feed into Sydney and GWS? I think so. Yeah. I think Brander was originally. Oh, maybe that's I'm pretty sure he example. played for Allies. He in, did. Yeah. yeah. But he's Victorian as well, mm. I think. Yeah, something weird like that. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely Victorian, mm. but you're right, he played for Allies. Um, but no, no, you're right, there are a number of... Po- well, Setterfield, he's yeah. Victorian. Mm. Um, he was an academy prospect. Yeah. Unless I'm getting that mixed up. But you're right, mm. no, you, so pa- certain parts of Victoria do feed into GWS, which yeah. is bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> um, so on the whole, yeah, I guess I don't really... Even the Darwin hookup for Gold mm. Coast, moderately big, a lot of good North Northern Territory talent. Yes. When they're not banned. But it has to be specifically Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Is Willie Rioli from Darwin? He's not, is he? No. I don't, is it purely Darwin or is it... It's just Darwin. Okay. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not the whole Northern Territory. Right. Yeah. So where do we think 2020... What, what do we think that holds for Gold Coast? Probably a similar to this year, but a slightly better version of it, I think. Like where they have that good start. They get some few surprise wins. They're compet- they're Because they were com- pretty competitive most of the year, really. Like, yeah. The percentage wasn't too bad, I don't think, until a few floggings in the end. Yeah, they, they tailed away badly, but you're right. Yeah. They started promisingly and yeah. couldn't sustain it. I think that's a pretty good They'll be able summer. to sustain it a few more rounds, I think. They'll have built up that yeah. body of work to be able to sustain a few more rounds, but not necessarily get the Ws either. But Could see them winning five games and finishing yeah. last. I can't put anyone lower than them. Mm, I think yeah, it's, it's a tough. disaster if anyone finishes lower than Gold Coast. Yeah, but... Last going into last year, going into this year, if it's just gone, they look like the worst team in AFL history in yeah. terms of talent. Mm. Yeah, like literally, I remember the odds. That was like Carlton were paying like fifty to one make finals, and they were paying five hundred to one or some yeah. shit ridiculous like wow. that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it was like and Carlton were like the second least favorite, so it was like a huge jump. Five hundred to one, my yeah, god, something ridiculous like that. A ridiculously big jump between them and the second worst team in terms of odds. Yeah. Well, to move on to the next expansion club, we have the Giants, who kind of had a bit of a quiet one as well. Sam Jacobs was their only in, which I think was a really good signing. Good pickup. In terms of... Um, Especially cost. What, cost yeah. Uh, cost for value, very good. So he's pretty old, but he is a list need for them, undoubtedly. Number one Ruckman straight away. Yes. So they brought in pick six uh, at the expense of 12 at 18. So they uh, did that swap with St Kilda. And... Uh, they, who else they lost? They lost Bonner on the on the deadline. I think he yeah. was the last... No, yeah. the second last or something like that. Jon- H, I think, was the last one through. Yeah. From what I saw. So they lost Bonner, Patton and Tomlinson. Interestingly, three players, all former top 11 picks mm. for the club as well. That'd and be did. the majority of their list profile, though, to be fair. Yeah. Tomlinson uh, left as a free agent as well. So I think they made a big salary dump because they are looking at players to re-sign in the next 12 yeah. months. Jeremy Cameron and Lockie Whitfield yeah. and I think somebody else that I've forgotten. Yeah, there's a third one, I believe. Uh, it wasn't Zach Williams, I don't think. It doesn't matter. Mm. Well, it doesn't matter. We just forgot. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, they that was productive for them, but Bonner was an absolute steal considering yeah, bargain. two I, years ago he was yeah. top 11. Yes, I did like especially because no one saw that coming. Ever, everyone just thought North Melbourne were going to sit pat after yeah. busting on Dougal, and then they had a no. <laughs> busting on Dougal, that's so sexual. Yeah, that phrase could be taken out of context, but I mean like busting, like they couldn't get. Yeah, them. yeah. Well, but I then think... out of nowhere, swiping on top end talent, but they wouldn't have had access to otherwise. It's good yeah. from their perspective. Yeah, I think we can all agree that. Um... I read something videos on four hundred k a year. I think it was like an yeah. article on. Fox footy or... I find that hard to believe. Uh, Maybe he was one of those ones that signed an early extension and they bumped him up. 400 for a club that already would have had salary cap issues in the Giants. Yeah, it's bizarre. And he hadn't played that many games. I don't know, I read it. That can't be right. Um, I don't know how big the actual cap is for a whole team, though. That's... That'd be an interesting. Yeah, but it wouldn't be on four hundred k. That's like mm. what you, uh, any good player would be on four hundred k. Like that's that's mm. the price of a good player. I, I think I read somewhere the average AFL salary is like in the three hundreds. True, but I've heard as well that that is brought up by uh, there's a lot of players under that mean average, and that yeah. the top players really drag that average up. Okay, but four hundred k would still put them mm. him over above average. Yeah. So I do, I'm skeptical about that, but nonetheless, um, they obviously were trying to dump some salary. Yeah. Uh, they're making a big play for a top five pick because they've got uh, Tom Green, who's yeah. a 
prospect um, that's probably likely to get bid on in the top five, yeah. and they want Melbourne's pick three apparently to get a pick before that, yeah, so, so that they can, can take yeah. Green and a top five yeah, pick, yeah. which is really interesting. So stay tuned for that. I mm. think we're going to see another deal involving the Giants. Yeah, draft day moves. That's a good thing as well. They're, they're yeah. still to come. I think they're going to go for a. Uh, they're going to be flag contenders again next year, the Giants. Certainly. And I think we can all agree the talent is sufficient mm. on the list. So this has probably been a productive, top albeit four. quiet. I'll say top four, I think, for them. Yeah. I'd say it's been a productive but quiet trade period. Yeah. Um, the next we have Hawks in. Sam Frost and John O'Patton and a, la- a raft of other picks. They've lost Grant Birchall and Pitney. So not a lot coming in, not a lot coming out. Definitely more better ins than outs. And mm. they've... Very full draft hand there, actually. Like yeah. picking like every round, I'm guessing, just looking yep. at the numbers roughly. And they've got pick eleven, which would be their f- highest pick in a while. Yeah. I don't even remember how long. Because uh, they've been trading out their mm. first rounders for as long as I've been. Yeah, topping up for years <laughs> with it. Yeah, but I think they'll be quietly happy. Pitney had only played two games this yeah. year, and, and behind Segler and Big Boy McAvoy, probably yeah. wasn't getting a game. Probably means McAvoy will have to remain. A ruckman rather than yeah. go back to the back line, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. Birchall was probably already on the way out. They were mm. tossing up whether to, to give him a new contract or I not think, anyway. I think I read somewhere they were going to keep him, but it was going to be like a small yeah. deal. It was line ball. A, yeah, bigger deal at Brizzy and a more opportunity, obviously. Probably wouldn't necessarily have gotten a game at Hawks. Yeah. Brizzy will get to slide right into that Hodgy role. Just going to move that, that mic just a little bit. Yeah. What am I? A bit quiet, am I? Uh, a little bit. It's just better to speak directly into it. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Um, Mike, you don't touch a man's mic. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mike? Um, so we have a couple of questions from Hawthorne fans in the Discord. Yeah. So um, Michael Stanton, great contributor. Yeah. He was uh, pumping on the live stream yesterday, old Mike. Gross. He says, why do you think GWS dealt with Hawthorne on both the Scully and Patton deals and that there wasn't any apparent interest from other clubs? I'm going to assume it's the standard narrative where a player chooses a club and at that point yeah. you've got to cop what club the player's chosen. It's the yeah. way the system works, rightly or wrongly. Patton was linked to Hawthorne. He has been for years mm. for whatever reason. I think he a, a grew up a fan of Hawthorne. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, Hawthorne just have this extra sort of like... They're a destination yeah. club, so I feel like they just land most of the targets. The only one I can think of that they didn't was Cornelia, and he yeah. didn't choose anyone else. He just stayed at his own club. Yeah. Scully and Patton also have um, injury considerations. That Patton's Mark, coming into the preseason healthy, though, I believe. He's yes. spent the last year dealing with his injury issues but, to get ready for this year. Yes. My point was more that yeah. they team, players with injuries kind of like Hawthorne because of the yeah, supposed okay, yeah. medical team. Yeah, yeah, what is, I don't know what the deal is with that. Yeah, I've heard... That's why yeah. Jager and Mira are yeah, a lot of people to, like their team to go there for that. So that kind of makes sense for Scully and Patton. But mm. I think, yeah, you're right. They were uh, Scully and Patton as well aren't like big headline players. So yeah. that's why there probably wasn't that much news about teams yeah. in a bidding war. I'm sure they had questions from other Scully. I can understand why there wasn't because people thought he wasn't going to play again. Yeah, they, yeah. Think, they thought everyone thought his ankle was cooked. Yeah, and he ended up playing half a season, right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. At least I think at least half a season. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dominic asks a pertinent question. He says, did Hawthorne fix what they needed to fix? Yeah, it's a tough one to say until I say, really. They've consolidated. We've got Frost even is a handy guy to have back. Mm. Pat and their key forward is probably their weakest position. So oh. they've locked in a guy that has number one key forward potential. Mm. So I, I would have plugged a hole, for sure. Gross. I would have said that their weaknesses or list weaknesses would have been key position forward and back. Yeah. And to add Frost and Patton, two guys. Um, how old is Frost, actually? He's like 26, 27? So, um, wouldn't have a clue. Maybe he's a bit older than that. But either way, yeah. to add two guys in their prime, yeah. uh, Patton's a former number one draft pick. I don't think these guys are going to set the world on fire. Yeah. I think they're going to be good, solid players who play well in a good Hawthorne system. Mm. And with a lot of draft picks, they'll pick kids that will go in their system well. Like yeah. You saw them take James Warple with pick 37 or whatever. 45, it was. I think it was. Yeah, it was something yeah. in that ballpark. Oh, ridiculous. Because yeah. he'd probably be like pick one or two if he redrafted that today. Yeah. And the thing is, people should have known, I think, with Warple. He was the captain of his Victorian team. Everyone knew he was a class act as mm. a person. Yeah. There's... Uh, yeah, even the big footy and online community all mm. rated Warple, even yeah. some first round. I th- I, you remember me, I was sitting here watching the yeah. draft with you and I was saying, Warple, Warple, please. Yeah. And I think there's footage of Rawlings at the Eagles desk 
Andre, when they're looking at their last pick, they ended up taking mm. Petrocelli, and it looks like he's saying Warple, Warple. <laughs> um, and we took Petrocelli instead. I mean, Petrocelli's all right, but yeah, anyway. Imagine if he's I'm got Warple. Warple. I know. Midfield would be even more bloody ridiculous. I think he was a bit of a go-home threat. So yeah. interstate teams didn't look at him that closely. Yeah, I do remember hearing that, actually. Yeah. Probably from you. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably from me, yeah. yeah. Hawthorne, 2020. Probably in the eight. Yeah, I think in the eight too. Yeah. Considering Tom Mitchell's coming back, and while I don't yeah. necessarily think Mitchell's amazing, yeah. he, I think he's he magnifies that. what else they've got. Like Tom yeah. Mitchell being a clearance beast, getting it out to a Tom Scully who's had a full preseason. Wingard healthy. as well. They yeah, Wingard exactly. They haven't played together yet. Mm. I feel like Titch will complement those guys very well. Hawthorne's the sort of team that could get the most out of Wingard. He yeah. played some really good games. I think he had three votes in the last game against West Coast. Yeah, he started to find a bit of form late in the year with him. Yeah. Took him a while to get his traps, but yeah, full pre-season, knowing the system now. Yeah, I think that might yeah. be eight, Hawthorne. Yeah, hard to argue. Next up, we have the D's Nuts, and uh, they brought in Ed Langdon Tomlinson through free agency. They brought in pick eight and a second rounder next year, and they've lost Sam Frost. And pick 22. Yeah. That's about it. That's, uh, I'd say, oh, and a second round of next year and a host of other picks. Yeah, but yeah. they hold picks three and eight. They've and gone balls deep in this year's draft. They have. Sure. So they've got a strong position with picks three and eight and added two best 22 players. So yeah. right as it stands right now, Melbourne have probably one of the best off seasons going yeah. so far. And you can tell they've banked on themselves improvement. Like the point you made earlier, a lot of times bank on themselves with these future picks. Melbourne have really banked on themselves, I think, yep. climbing back up towards that top four area where they were a few years ago. So they traded... Or two years ago. They traded in eight for a first round of next year, 26 and 50. Yeah. So... That first round of next year could be a better pick than pick eight. Yeah. <laughs> so right there, they could lose it if they don't make the finals. Yeah. Um, they've given up a second and third for free. However, I think they just really, really want to get into the top 10 this year. And I do, like I alluded to before, they could split that pick three for two later picks with GWS yeah. somehow. I don't know how. Because GWS have, they could take the six from GWS in a second round or a third round. Yeah, just to it'd get have it. to be a future second, but because mm. um, GWS don't have a second this year. Right. But that is very true. Um, so they could have a stronger draft position yet. Um, and Tomlinson is a clear upgrade on Sam Frost, I would say. Mm. They, they sound like they want to play Tomlinson as a wing, though. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. So they added two wings in Tomlinson and Langdon. Yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. They do have a fairly settled back line, I think. Well, maybe not settled is the word, but there's upside there. They're definitely upside. Lever, May, yeah. haven't really seen them Salem. operating. In the, yeah, Salem, exactly. Um, his class act. Hibbard and uh, Marty, Marty Hall. Marty Hall, yeah. yeah. I like Marty Hall. Yeah, so they do, they do have a bit of talent in that back back six. Um, and like you say, yeah, they really bet on themselves. So and their um, midfield, the top, like on paper, is probably a top four midfield. I've kind of gone off that you know, lately. Hmm? I'm not sure I rate it that highly. Clayton Oliver, Petr- oh, not Petraga, Angus Brayshaw, Viney, yeah, Angus, Gorn, if Angus you can. Angus Brayshaw that. didn't score a single round yeah. over this year. <laughs> Yeah, he scored third place last year. I know. Think? It's the first time that's ever happened. Yeah. He's played all, every game as well this year. Yeah. I am a little bit off the Brayshaw bandwagon. Clayton Oliver will be a good player, though. Yeah. But I think their midfield is uh, it's back with a big question mark on it now for me, mm. personally. Um, 2020, what does that hold for them? They start the climb back up the ladder. How far? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. I. Uh, like, they have the... They could get back to where they were two years ago, but they could do an Adelaide and keep that stagnation. And yeah, I'm skeptical up. they'll make the whole jump back up to where mm. they were at least yeah. in one year. It just doesn't happen that often. Yeah, like even the doggies, you can sort of you could kind of compare the situations, even though the doggies broke through and actually won the flag, unlike Melbourne. Even Port when they were 2014, when they had that prelim, yeah, and then sort of stagnated the next few years with a relatively young list. Yeah, you could see Melbourne in that position. Yeah, I could see them. 10th to 12th, mm. which might sting yeah. a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's just the way I see it, personally. Yeah. North Melbourne, we alluded to before, brought in Aiden Bonner on deadline day. Pick 26, pick 50, um, and next year's first from Melbourne. They lost pick eight and uh, second round, a third round of next year. So it was quiet. They went for Dougal Howard and Papley, but didn't come away with the chocolates, as yeah. usual, for North Melbourne. <laughs> um, yeah. And I was questioning it. I was thinking, you know, 
at first I didn't, I looked at Melbourne trade and I was like, it's interesting. Um, certainly on value, North Melbourne probably do stand to win. In terms of points. In terms of points. Stuff. But I, I, like I've said on the live stream, for a team that missed the finals with a mature list, mm. to have no first rounder this year and not trade any players in that this was before they got Bonner. Yeah. I thought, is that really going to please the fans? You know, how would uh, you feel if you're a fan? I would, I would be pretty I'd be underwhelmed. A bit, yeah, I'd be like... They did get Bonner in the dying moments for... You could say getting three. Bonner in is effectively like getting a first rounder in. Yeah, it really is. And yeah. then they're going to have an extra first rounder next year. And there's also cases... Um, oh, and they've got a second rounder this year as well, 26 yeah. and 27. There's also a case to be made for the fact that 8 and 26 aren't massively different this year. Yeah, a lot of people say they're comparable. Yeah. Especially if you're getting the additional first it's worth that downgrade mm. based on the talent projections of everyone yeah so there isn't too much to say about north it's just that i think they did a good deal for bonnar kind of benefited maybe from a salary cap squeeze at the giants mm. so it's effectively bringing in a first and uh they're gonna have two picks in the 20s and they have a good strong position next year as well so all in all like they get a tick for yeah. some good shrewd business but i don't think some anything... money bully type under the radar moves not world like Nothing, nothing that will bring Not them up Not a Tim Kelly bring in type of thing. Nothing that will bring them up yeah. the ladder extensively. Yeah. So I think they'll finish similar to where they did yeah. last year, to be honest. I think we've said that so many times. We're going to finish about where they finished this year. Yeah. But it's just, I, I guess, more mm. like I just don't see them making finals. Yeah. Moving on to Port Adelaide. And there's a little bit more to talk about with these guys. So they brought in picks 12, 18, uh, a third and fourth next year. And they lost Frampton, Dougal Howard, Paddy Ryder... Pick 10, they downgraded, and uh, 2020 round four. So they hold 12, 18, and 29 in the yeah. top 30. So th- strong draft position, yeah. two first rounders. Do you think they cocked up with Dougal Howard? A lot of the Port Adelaide Port Adelaide fans seem to be in raptures. They, they seem ropeable. They're mm. like, this is an absolute travesty. We got shafted. But as we were saying before, the value of those picks between like 8 and 26, people about the same. So you're getting two cracks at the cherry with it instead mm. of one now. So basically, Dougal for 18 is probably fair enough. And then the two-pick downgrade for Ryder isn't too bad considering you're getting two cracks at that pretty yeah. even cherry. So 18 for Howard on value is probably about right. Yeah, I feel he, that's He fair. was contracted. However, he's probably gonna, he probably would have been a good key back prospect for the next mm. eight years at Port Adelaide. I didn't want to play him as a key back. Though. Exactly, exactly. It just seems like a bad case of bad management. Signed mm. him on a big contract extension yeah. last year. People are calling for Hinkley's head, I think. They probably have been for a while, but it yeah. sounds like they're getting more and more vocal. He's, he's probably going to cop what Ross copped this year, I think, mm. Hinkley. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't imagine they're not too impatient down there. I, I could see yeah. him not lasting the whole year next yeah. year. Yeah, I could see him getting rossed. They missed out on Orazio. Mm. Not really through fault of their own. It's just that circumstance. He was contracted anyway. They also kept Sam Gray, who, if you remember, requested yeah, a trade, was, and we, yeah. um, we all kind of forgot. So he yeah. ended up getting Dan Butler, which was probably yeah. a big factor the in that. Consolation prize. Yeah, that's right. Um, so they've strengthened this year's draft hand and next year's as well. well. What do they bring in next year? A third and a four, so not significantly, but they might yeah. have a few extra points, which I was saying before could... They used to bargain with mm. other teams next year who yeah. need points for their academy players. Um, and they're going to keep refreshing the list with youth, which has been a clear strategy. Yeah. Last year, they brought in three picks under 18. And they nailed all three of them. Yeah, and then also drafted good players. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that coming. Yeah, neither did they. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I messed it up. I messed up the joke, but that's all right. You get what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, anyway... <laughs> On the whole, though, I just think, uh, yes, they have pick 18 for Howard. Um, but all in all, is that a good trade for them? I, th- I, I don't know. I think that's going to burn them. And I know their fans are pissed mm. off. Their fans are pissed off. Like, it, their fans are in more of a position to be informed on that one than I am. But yeah, I'm yeah. not as down on it as a lot of yeah. people seem to be. Well, I used the example yesterday in the live stream for those who didn't see it. And I said, teams will always value their own players differently to what other people do. Yeah. So Dan Venables, for instance... I wouldn't trade for pick 20. But yeah. those who don't know that much about Venables, for instance, who would laugh in your fan, face if you asked for they'd 20. They'd be like, pick 20 would be great. Yeah. For, a, for a contracted 
Venables. That's what probably what he would cost. Mm. They'd be like, yeah, that's about right. You do that. And I'm, yeah. So th- that's probably how Port fans feel as well. Mm. But uh, the whole thing about him needing to play forward now it was a bit of a middle finger to him. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to play there, allegedly. Yeah, like he earned his start like chops as a defender. Everyone He did earn his chops. Uh, everyone rate, rated him as a defender. That's why clubs are trying to bring him in. Yeah. He, he prefers to be there. He ate free at the butcher all year. <laughs> John Butcher. Oh, there's a reference. <laughs> Um, 2020 outlook for Port. I'm going to go with a bit of a cliche here and say about the same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's hard to see where the improvement comes from, but mm. it's hard to see them being too much worse. Yeah. Oh, Billy Frampton was the other out. Yeah. So they do have a number of um, ruck, young rucks as well. So Lysett yeah. and, and um, oh my God, what's his name? Laddams. Yeah, yeah. Laddams is the other one they're going to play. I reckon they could just quickly pick up Luke Jackson, they got pick twelve. I reckon he's mm. if he fought, if he lasts pick twelve, he could be yeah. someone they're interested in. That's very true. He might not last that long. The thing is with Luke Jackson, I don't know if you he could be anything. He could be a key forward, could be a key back, could be a rock, mm. could be a mime. <laughs> no, that's very true. Um, he's also a dead set doppelganger for my mate Beery. So I've told Beery to buy a polo for whatever team Luke Jackson gets drafted to and walk around <laughs> town and see what happens. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> so if we ever say we've got Luke Jackson on the podcast, it's probably just my mate Beery. Yeah, <laughs> gonna crack the code. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no Port Adelaide. I, I have missing the eight next year as well, mm. to be honest. But yeah, it's a tight, tight squeeze for that eight. At the moment. Yeah, Richmond Premiers. Almost nothing to say about these guys. They've got yeah. pick thirty nine in for Brandon Ellis as compensation, and they lost Dan Butler yeah. for fifty six. They have three picks in the top forty, um, which is fairly strong. Alex Rance is a virtual yeah. recruit for them. Yeah. Um, they'll be very happy. Obviously, yeah. they've lost. They won the flag. They don't really need to add too much. But I have heard them link to Harley Bennell. Weren't they linked to him the last time when he was leaving? Remember, he went to Richmond after the Gold Coast thing. He went to Richmond for a meeting, met up with Dusty Martin, and they reckon yeah. he got on the piss pretty much as soon as he landed in Melbourne. Right. That Do you remember ring, that? Does ring a yeah, bell. that was a big thing. I remember Richmond were into him in that situation as well. <laughs> that does ring a bell. Yeah. Um, with their recent luck with WA talent, um, Sydney Stack, yeah. Marlene Pickett. They've obviously mm. I'm not too concerned about, you know, picking up players with troubled pasts. Yeah. Harley Vinell could add to that list. And he's yeah. just as talented as the others, if not more. Yeah. So um, that's a scary proposition mm. if they bring him in. With Bennell, is a weird one for me because Freo let him go, obviously. It was sort of like at the point you've gambled on him this long, you may as well sort of almost keep going, even if you're rookie list him. Well, I think they did. Well, he already was. Wasn't he already? He sort of had a. I think he had a falling out with people, and they sort of just went, "Yeah, we're cutting." I, well, he was delisted yeah. before they realised that they removed those extra muscles in it behind his knees, and then they were like, yeah. "Oh, this is what was wrong with him." That yeah. they'd already delisted him by the yeah, yeah. So that, that's where they should have ridden it out. I think. Yeah, but yeah. a bit longer, but yeah, twenty twenty yeah. for Richmond. Top two. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're going to be probably my favourite to win the flag. At the yeah, moment, but favourite for minor premier, favourite for flag. Yeah. They'll have a nice, friendly, accommodating schedule at the MCG. Yeah, probably will. Yeah. That's very true. Next up is the Sydney Swans, who brought in Louis Taylor, pick 32, pick 76, and a future third. Uh, they lost Darcy Cameron, uh, not a big loss, but Zach Jones probably was. I think he is. I like Zach Jones. Yeah, Jack Jones. Uh, Zach. <laughs> 2019 picks are 5, 25, and 32, so they str- mm. hold a strong draft hand, but ultimately they're only their biggest link the trades this year were losing what they Papley. didn't get in <laughs> yeah they're losing Papley and they're trying to get in Danaher um, apparently they never offered five for Danaher I think their best offer according to Dottero was nine and a future first which is probably a fair oh. deal to be honest yeah but, considering they're probably only going to get one first if he sails off into the sunset and restricted free agency yeah exactly at best yeah so Papley staying is a bit of a win considering he had four years left on this mm. deal. Yeah, signed until 2023 or something. Yeah. Ludicrous. So that it sounded like that deal was only ever going to happen if yeah. the Danaher deal got done. Hence, yeah, Sydney offered mm. nine and a future first for him. Which, to quickly go back to where I was talking about Carlton, is where they should have just gone, yeah, like what St Kilda did in the Brad Hill thing, go, yeah, this might not happen. We've got to get everything else done. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Just to drive that one home some more. <laughs> Louis, Louis Taylor has brought in uh, has come in I think he could be another sort of Sydney Swans money ball pick because they have a history of doing this yeah. they did it a couple of years uh, with a couple last year was it Jackson Thurlow and Ryan Clark they yeah. brought in um, Louis Taylor again would be a chief option just to add yeah. some depth in that age bracket because we talk yeah. about how they're rebuilding and they've got players in that um, 
you know, players who are like 18 to 22 yeah. that are really, really good. And then they've got obviously some mm. of their older stars. They've had a bit of an exodus uh, with retirements, yeah. that is. And Zach Jones. Henry. Zach Jones is a bit of a blow, but he's been talked about as leaving for a few years now, mm. hasn't he? I yeah, think. he's because his brother Nathan Jones, he's got that pull back to Victoria. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm sorry. surprised Melbourne didn't have more of a crack at him considering they were chasing wings. Yeah, that's, I guess that's true. Yeah, that's true. Huh. But mind you, they're not really that mm. holding on to Zach, Nathan Jones that strongly at the moment, mm. if you believe the rumours about him yeah. offering an insul- uh, insultingly low pay cut. That was what was reported yeah. a few months considering ago. Considering he's their captain. Yeah. yeah. And well, been a great cl- he's he been stepped a- down, didn't he? Has he? I thought he stepped down. I think he's still captain or co-captain with Viney or something. At the very least, he's a co-captain. Let me look at the... Um, I need to know right now. And I thought thi- I said yeah. that. And the thing is, if they have offered him an insolently low pay cut, that is absolute bullshit, I reckon. The, the amount of... That man has carried that club on his back when they were dog shit for years. Yeah. No, he, he, has, stood he stood up down, to, stood down oh, as captain. How recently? Uh, 30th of September. So oh, okay. Very recently. Yeah. yeah. But no wonder I hadn't heard about it there. Yeah. I was too busy enough. reading trade rumours instead of captain yeah. rumours. Captain rumours. Yeah. Yeah, but that's bullshit if they're trying to staff Nathan Jones after everything he's done for that club. Yeah. That's that was, fucked. That is definitely... Like the case that was mm. definitely reported, but anyway, with, enough about Melbourne. Um, Sydney, I think they just need to have a draft focus this year. Maybe wait twelve months, see where Joe Dunner who's at um, mm. as a buddy kind of replacement, even though Buddy's got a few years left. I've talked about how weird I think it is Dunner is their target, considering the amount yeah. of tall talent they have at yeah, forward. It's stupid, really. But uh, nonetheless, twenty twenty, I think bottom four again. Mm. To be honest, I mm. could see it's lot. Slide up the ladder just from yeah. Heaney probably having a bounce back year. Yeah. Florent having another year of development. Florent finished the year really strongly. Yeah. I could see him sort of taking the next step for sure. I could see those guys giving them that internal lift to get them a little higher, but yeah. they're not going to be climbing Mount Everest or anything in terms of <laughs> yeah. climbing. I think Buddy get playing games is important. That'll I think he, he wins games off his own. Yeah. Mood, so. He'll win in one or two games as being a beast. Yeah. Even right. in his... Advancing age, I won't advanced. say advanced. I won't say advanced age, but advancing <laughs> age. Um, so we'll move on to the Saints, who were probably one of the most active. The I'd the say the most active, comfortably. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I hedged them. They were definitely the most active team. Yeah. Um, so you ins- know me, I'm the king of hedging, and if I'm not hedging on something, it's yeah. yeah. Um, five best twenty-two players in Dan Butler, Bradley Hill, Dougal Howard, Zach Jones, and Paddy Ryder. Um, and there's been a swap around of picks. The first pick is now 51, so they've traded out of this draft. Um, they've also lost Blake Akers, Josh Bruce, and Jack Stephen, um, and pick six was one of the picks yeah. they gave away. But uh, they did hold on to pick their first pick next year, which is huge. Yeah. We were kind of um, alluding to the fact that maybe Max, oh, sorry, Ben King was going to be their target, but he's obviously re-signed yeah. with Not the Gold that Coast Not that necessarily Sun. means anything these days. I think it. I think it does if he's out of contract versus whether he's in contract. I think it. It only means something in the sense that Gold Coast can milk St Kilda for more than they could have if he wasn't yeah. extended. Yeah. He's probably gone. Yeah, I'll sign the extension with you guys. See how we go. Yeah. Worst case it. scenario, you can milk me for more when I crack the shits and go home. I suppose that is possible. Mm. Yeah. It's I a th- cynical view, but yeah, could be what's going on. I think, yeah, we alluded to before, Akers, I think, was a high potential player, but he stagnated. Mm. I don't think St Kilda were developing very I'd well. I'd we say it's injuries. similar to that Calamar Chi thing where they, the talent's there, but the position and place in the team wasn't. Mm. So the fresh opportunity is probably yeah. best for him and St Kilda were able to maximise his worth. Yeah. Yeah, they probably, they probably were. Um, Stephen is obviously a loss, but it was probably yeah. only two years of football they mm. lost out of him, and he was always going to leave. Um, yeah. This is a big haul for a team that has trouble attracting talent. We were talking yeah. about it like 12 months ago. Mm. They can't get a single player to play for him. Um, now they're the destination five, club. Five best 22 players, including Bradley Hill, which is Bradley Hill was a, like a pretty marquee signing. Do you reckon he's their best player? <sighs> Who's their best player now that Jack Stevens leaving? Seb Ross mm. comes to mind. Seb or Brad Hill? Possibly Billings. I think Hill was the best out of them. Yeah, probably. I'd probably give Brad Hill the edge. Yeah. Saints fans would be like, what the hell? Nah, it's Seb Ross. Probably. Hmm. But I yeah. think I think it's actually Brad As Hill. As a Freo Hill. man that loves him some Brad Hill, I'd give Brad the tick. But <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm probably biased in assessing Brad Hill. Mm. Howard is a really strong pickup. Um, but mm. I think they got a pretty good deal for him there, pick 18. Um, especially now that King is off for at least, well, yeah. at least 12 months. Um, this is a bumper trade period. So... 2020 is a good question for them because 
Injuries were a big mm. blow for them last year. They yeah. were one of the most injury-struck clubs. So they've added more depth now, and with more luck, theoretically, they should improve from mm. their bottom five or six position. I think they're very comparable to Carlton, except they've nailed this draft period and Carlton shat the bad light. Mm. They've both actually were clubs where they've... Carlton have obviously got more kids through the door the past few years compared to St Kilda. Just like you, really. <laughs> Bloody hell. What was I saying? <laughs> I can tell you killed my flow there. <laughs> but yeah, like... Kids through the door. Yeah, like... Revolving is, door of kids, I think, is what you were saying. <laughs> but can yeah. we get back to football, please? I'm trying to, but you keep <laughs> fucking me up. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, like, these clubs have been getting the kids through the door to try and build that foundation, have them grow into that. Now that people want to be a part of that, mm. St. Kilda have succeeded in getting guys in, Carlton haven't, and I think that's going to be really telling in the future years yeah. comparing those two clubs are probably in pretty similar situations bottom end of the ladder yeah mm. in a rebuild yeah that's true mm. I don't think they'll improve that much because I don't rate their top end talent but their depth mm. is better so I think that uh, yeah, yeah 12th mm, yeah. Quarter, to be honest yeah they will lose a little bit in the short term with Steven mm. but I still think it's an overall good trade. but he wasn't playing that much this year to be true with, so it's hard to true yeah good point um, all right, so now for the West Coast Eagles. So they, well, yeah, what was your analogy yesterday? You came up with a good analogy for their trade period. It's like that guy who gets really, um, goes way too hard at pre's. Oh, yeah, I was, I was, it was a comment I stole off Reddit, actually. It was like, yeah, they rolled up to the party, just drank the whole bottle of bloody vodka or whatever they bring and passed out behind the couch. That reminds me of a very specific night with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the beers and cowboys that night, thank you. Oh, was he a cowboy, that guy? No, that was the $8 bottle of booze I bought because that's all I could afford once I ran out of beers. <laughs> I was joking. I, I, <laughs> there was no cowboy. Anyway, the Eagles did go hard early. And, uh, yeah, so they obviously traded in Tim Kelly, which was a huge deal. The biggest trade of the period, best player to move clubs by far, I would say. Um, they traded out two firsts and two seconds for Kelly and a third or something like that. Um, so they paid Saying it price. like that makes it sound like a high price, but... The position the Eagles are in, those are going to be low yeah. round picks. You'd hope so, because if, if next year's a top 10 pick, then fuck, that did not pay off. That would be the biggest choke job in history if you guys didn't make the fucking eight. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Fu- don't get me wrong, I'd fucking love it. But <laughs> I don't know if it would be that the biggest. I've seen plenty of bigger choke jobs hmm. <laughs> just on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, this is what know. happens when we don't have the 20-minute break. Oh, man, I'm so, I'm so knackered. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're just slinging. We're just um, slinging. That's the sum of my best material. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, the Eagles, that's West Coast, it. AFL. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they obviously paid a heavy price, but I think the best way to sum it up, I think I said it in the Joycey video, the Joycey video, which is um, what would Geelong rather have back, all those mm. picks or Tim Kelly? I think yeah. Yeah, what would both te- considering both teams are in the premiership window, you'd prefer the player. And Richmond, but if, hypothetically, if it was like Tim Kelly was coming from Carlton or a team nowhere near premiership building, maybe yeah. Carlton would prefer the picks. Yeah, in that sort of situation. But a team that's in that window, yes, you want Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes a difference. Yep, yeah, uh, I think it's fairly well summed mm. up. So the Eagles don't enter the draft until 46, and then the second pick is 91. They traded up to that 46. Yeah, they did. So They're, uh, they're targeting was, the next Braden Ainsworth. That was interesting. They traded away 64 to, for 91 to, yeah. to move from 52 to 46. So I'm thinking yeah. they think there's a strong top, well, a decent top 50, yeah. and that's their cutoff. That was yeah. interesting for me. But anyway, they're going to have 46 and then two picks at the end. I think you still have to take three picks. Something, yeah. It depends how many guys you've delisted. Yeah. Um, and retired, I, it'll have to be a minimum of three, I'm pretty yeah. sure. But I take W's has a question for us from the Discord, and he says, how does Mesco's midfield rank now that Kelly is in? Top. I'd give him the best. Really? One, probably. Yeah, okay. Them or Collingwood or... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'd say top four without too much hesitation. Top three without any hesitation for yeah. me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. If I rattle <laughs> off names, it's bloody ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Gaff, Shuey, Kelly, Yo, yeah. Redden. That best four. Is Sheed. Fantastic. Yeah, Redden and Sheed are pretty Nick good. Nick Nat players. tapping it down to him, yeah. assuming he has a full preseason and yeah. can stay in the park. That is ridiculous. Yeah, that's true. As much as I'd love to poo-poo on them, I just can't. It's ridiculously good. So Collingwood's is so strong on paper. Mm. Richmond's obviously did really well. Prestia kind of played out of his skin this I year. I think the thing is with Richmond's, though, they've gotten more out of than the sum of their parts. Yeah. 
Someone Whereas, like Cochin as well is mm. probably like he statistically he's actually not that good, mm. but he is pretty high impact. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think we'll agree top two or three. Mm. I'll, I'll say yeah. top four. I'll yeah. hedge it. I'll say top four. Twenty twenty. Mm. Where do you think they'll finish? Top two. Yeah, I think I think they're the yeah. second best team going into this year. Um, you, you lo- you're a man that loves the tiery style videos. I'll I'll put it this way: Tier one, West Coast Richmond. Mm. Tier two. GWS, Collingwood, la, 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 la. Yeah, I agree. You go from there, but tier ones, those two. Yeah, I do love those teary videos. <laughs> um, very true. Yeah, you watch a few crying videos. <laughs> the crying pandas or whatever it's, they it's are. It's my favourite category. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about Pornhub. All right, so our last team is Western Bulldogs, and then we're going to round off with some questions from the Discord. But uh, they brought in Josh Bruce, Alex Keith, and a future third for pick 32, 45, and 51. So they've brought in two... Really good um, depth players, or mm-hmm. I mean, they'll be best twenty-two. Um, they've needed defensive reinforcements after they jo- Jordan Roughhead mm-hmm. left them and became a good player at Collingwood, yeah. which would have and they them. turned Norton into a forward. Yeah, and Josh Bruce is up there to support yep. him as a forward. Um, so they've strengthened their bookends and they've kept pick thirteen, which I know mm-hmm. was a deliberate strategy for them. They didn't want to split it or downgrade yeah. it, and Adelaide was targeting pick thirteen quite aggressively. I think they're gonna. I think they should make a big play for Ben King. I'd, I'd agree with that, especially considering that money they offered Tom Boyd now has probably mm. disappeared because he's retired, so they yeah. probably have that capacity to yeah. make another godfather-type offer to a young key and lure them yeah. back to Victoria. I mean, at the end of the day, Ben's going to be in the same state as Max, if that's, yeah. if that's his concern. He's with his family, yeah. He can make a lot of money at the Bulldogs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just think uh, as good as Keith is, I reckon Ben King, well, they would complement each other. They yeah. could both play in that back line, so... Um, Ben's playing forward for Gold Coast. Isn't he is. You're right. Yeah. That's true. He was drafted yeah. as a key defender, yeah. but he could play wherever. Yeah, because he was a back until Max went down. Then he went forward, wasn't mm. it? In his draft year. Yeah, I th- he certainly yeah. played forward and back in his yeah. draft year. That's right. Yeah. Um, but I guess there's not too much to say about the Bulldogs. Like uh, their midfield was really strong this year, as we all know. Dunkley yeah. really came into his own, had his career best season. Bont and McRae are ridiculous yeah. players. Even Hunt, Lockie yeah. Hunter's Lockie very Hunter. good. Yeah, so, and Bailey Smith played 23 mm. games. He was a good first-round draft pick last year. Yeah, I liked Bailey Smith. So to strengthen forward and back, I think, was a huge plus. Mm. They, I think they did very well. and Yeah, yeah. They, they spent very little to do very well, really. Yeah. And they've kept pick 13. So yeah. I think it was a very good, very productive Yeah, um, they've done pick. well, for sure. So we'll move on through the questions um, because I'm, I'm wary that, that well, there's quite a few questions and that battery is on one bar. So... Um, just have a yeah. quick go through them. Which big news story from the trade period has the biggest influence on team expectations next year? And that was Dave. Mm, I, ooh. I think St. Kilda people are probably going to expect more than maybe they're going to get. Yeah. Sort of thing. Okay. Like they, they're going to see all these names come through the door and think, yeah, we're going to start shooting up the ladder again. Mm. But I don't think it might not be as much of a, yeah, as expected sort of thing. Danaher staying is a big mm. news story. That yeah. will probably lift Essendon's expectations. That would be another narrative around Essendon. Yeah. I think, I think the answer is Tim Kelly, though. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, I think people's expectations for the Eagles were still very high. With they were, but now everyone's kind of jumped into, oh, they're going to win the flag now, mm. which is not necessarily... Yeah, it's not written in stone yet, yeah, that's no for sure. Way. No way. Yeah. Um, Farmer Toby. Uh, thank you, Dave, for that question. Yeah. Farmer Toby's asking, who are the biggest winners and losers? I'm going to agree with what you've written there. Yeah, you read my notes. Actually, I'll it's, definitely agree with the loser, actually. Carlton, I've been shitting on him for the past two days. And yeah. Nothing's going to change that in the past hour or so. So, yeah. Yeah, Carlton with the losers. Winners. Yeah, Saints are a winner. It's hard to... It's hard to what's the metric? Is it yeah. how much you've improved? Is it how well you handled a bad situation? Yeah. The, you Geelong could, probably yeah. did the best mm. business, yeah. but who's actually improved on their team the most? Probably mm. West Coast. Yeah. And St Kilda added five best 22 players. I, I could even Kilda. go someone low-key, like the Bulldogs had a really good trade yeah. period. They did what they needed to do, but he didn't overspend, didn't yeah. do anything. Melbourne's got two top 10 picks mm. now yeah. and two best 22 players coming in. Yeah. So there's a bunch of winners, and we kind of went through mm. them all, but if I had to say one, maybe St Kilda. And yeah, yeah Carlton probably the loser for yeah, the lack for of... Mm. This is the period where they needed to get yeah. established players. I think there really is a contrast between St Kilda and Carlton's yeah. positions throughout the past 18 months or so. Yeah. Mm. That's culminated in this trade period. Yeah. And going into this trade period, you would have pegged Carlton being the team to that would, would really... Secure players, yeah, yeah that's true. Bruce from the Discord, g'day Bruce, asks, Brucey. who's your favourite for the rising star? 
and that includes players who played last year who've played under 10 games? I'll probably go the simple answer for Al. Yeah, I think everyone's saying, thinking Rao, but um, some other names that have come up with Tom Green from GWS, yeah. if he gets a game. That's a, that's a big caveat with Tom Green, yeah. if he gets a game. Yeah. Rankin didn't play last year. Um, Sarong. Uh, the reason I put Sarong is because um, a non-Gold Coast player. So yeah. Gold Coast players don't generally win the Rising Star. Yeah. So Sarong, I think, will go top five. Mm. Uh, Chase Jones was a high pick last year, top eight. I don't I mind that. Yeah. And he's still uh, eligible. So is Jackson Haitley, Liam Stocker, mm. and Riley Collier Dawkins. So I don't really have a prediction. Even other. Ben King. I think Ben no, King is. Do you play over 10? I looked it up. Yeah, oh. he's played 14. Yeah. I didn't realize he played that many games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, so which tried. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Bruce. I'm going to. Uh, I don't know. I would say. Liam Stocker. I would say Rao, but Liam Stocker is mm. probably my dark horse and mm. Riley Even Anderson. Dawkins. Yeah, I didn't even Anderson, write Anderson down, but it could be, easily yeah. be Anderson, yeah. yeah. Which trade were you surprised didn't happen, says Duck. That's HK Pig, I believe. Yeah, the Carlton trades probably. Yeah, Martin I'm surprised they didn't get at least one of those guys through the doors. I thought yeah. I thought Papley was going to happen, so I'd mm. say that one. Yeah. Um, Duck also asked, was there a player that you thought were... Was there a player that was considered to be overpaid for that will prove worth the cost? Now, I'd say the two candidates for this are Kelly and Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, with the heaviest prices, uh, sorry, with the heaviest prices paid. Yeah. And then the only ones really talked about is overpaid. Yeah. I think the Kelly one's easier to assess because if the Eagles win the flag, it's justified. If they yeah. don't, then you reflect on it thinking they yeah. pay too much. St Kilda aren't necessarily going for a flag next year. So Brad yeah. Hill, is, it's a little bit murkier how they assess that. Yeah. I, like, I certainly hope Tim Kelly. He could to win be their it. best and fairest. That could be an assessment, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so Kelly and Hill, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Hopefully mm. Tim Kelly and. <laughs> uh, um, what was the most mutually beneficial trade? Asks Bangers. I'm gonna say a weird, I'm gonna say the Geelong Eagles trade because yeah. I think that the picks that Geelong have gotten in really are gonna help them consolidate their list for the next decade as yeah. some of their older talent starts sailing off into the sunset. Yeah, it's gonna really give them a solid foundation to, for sustained success. Yep. That's and obviously the Eagles have got a top 10 player in the AFL in yeah. their team. Yeah, that's a good call. In the middle of their premiership window. That's true. I didn't yeah. write that one down, but it is, it is a good nomination. I'm going to give it go a few left field ones. So Eddie bets for a fourth rounder. So Adelaide yeah. get the salary cap dump. Yeah. Carlton get a bit of experience and he'll be okay yeah. for a season or two. Mm. I think that is mutually beneficial. Yeah. I've, jo- I've heard a few Carlton people shit on it, but a few people like, yeah, yeah Eddie Betts is back, yeah. yeah. I they'll think be it's happy probably somewhere in the middle. When he's snagging goals from the boundary mm. line, they'll be happy. It'll be somewhere in the middle of that reaction. Yeah. Realistically. It was only a fourth round up. Mm. So. Yeah, that's why I was even saying to my mate who's the Carlton supporter who was carrying on, like, you paid pretty much nothing for him. Yeah. But he's just pissed off because they delisted Daisy Thomas, I think. Yeah, well, the, the, it's kind of justified in hindsight. They, Daisy Thomas getting delisted. They didn't bring any players in other than Eddie Betts no. and someone else. But, yeah. yeah. Um, Josh Bruce for 32 and 51, I thought was mutually beneficial because uh, while Josh, Josh Bruce was a best 22 player, 50, 32 was used to get Zach Jones. Oh. So And long-term in St. Kilda's prospects, was he a best 22 player yeah, in their priorities? True. Yeah, they got Max King coming through. Yeah, even McCartan. Yeah. Whatever he's uh, going. Yeah. I think the fact that it helped them get um, Jones into the side mm. makes it mutually beneficial. Yeah. And James H as a salary dump for Collingwood, they got some salary cap relief. and They got a second rounder out of us as well, which I feel true. is a bit excessive for, f- yeah, for, for where a... he's at and the fact it's a salary dump. I was expecting it to be like 58 or a future third or something. Yeah, I suppose so. Not a second, but... Yeah. Aish is a good player. He'll be best 22 at least. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Which club are you... That was Bangers and he has another one. Which yeah. club are you most excited for this draft? So the, the yeah. ones for me are the ones with all the strongest draft yeah. hands. And I like... I love watching teams, they're strategized when they've got a bunch yeah, of picks. Yeah. So it's Gold Coast 4 in 20. Geelong have 4 in 36. And Fremantle have 3 under 22. So those yeah. are my three. And you must think Fremantle's got an exciting... Um, so I've, I've kind of wanted us to leverage it for now a little more, but at the same time, there was no one really to leverage it for. So yeah. we've made the best of the situation, I think, and be interested to see how we go in the draft. Yeah. There's a few WA players as yeah. well, which is kind of exciting. We so. could sort of go that Port Adelaide Adelaide strategy from last year when their South Australian team won the national champs because mm. WA won it this year. Yeah. Mind you, it wasn't only like one South Australian kid taken by those clubs. Yeah, they Rosie. didn't end up getting them. Yeah, but. It was just Rosie, yeah. Mm. Um, 
Anyway, so the last yeah. question from Eagles Guy, and uh, this feels like a long podcast. I have no idea how long we've been going for. But, yeah, uh, the last question. To know. Which teams have the brightest and bleakest outlooks? Mm. Yeah, obviously the tier one I mentioned earlier is the brightest. So Richmond West Coast? Yeah. Yeah. And bleakest, probably Gold Coast, as you've written there, but yeah. I kind of, it's hard to think of someone else, but I think there is. Could be someone else. North Mel. I don't know if that, that's I, I, it's one of I can't see them improving enough to win a flag, but at the same time, I can't see them getting shitter enough to mm. get the high end picks through the door. I think North are right. I think before I this think year, with Gold Coast, at least they've bottomed out and got picks and promise. North Melbourne sort of seems in that middle of the road. And I would much rather be, be North to. Melbourne than Gold Coast. I don't, I'd rather have the potential to succeed rather than be like, yeah, we're but you think come. Gold Coast has more potential to succeed than North long term? I'm don't. saying long term. I don't agree. North, North Melbourne's going to be that sort of team that stays in that bloody... Why? They've got middling talent. They're just going to keep bloody... Nah, but you don't need you don't need really good picks to come good. Mm, but still, it's like... I just can't see them going anywhere. You At least Gold Coast has... Team. I think they're just a team that's going to chug around in that 10 to 13 range for the next 20 years. No, I disagree with that. I disagree mm. with that. They're a fairly successful club in the last... Like, they've never won a flag, but they've consistently mm. played finals, and this mm. is their rebuild. I disagree with that. I'm going to say mm. Gold Coast have the bleakest outlook because they have a proven record of botching rebuilds. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think Richmond, GWS and West Coast in that top three uh, are three of maybe the best four or five teams and I still think they all have good youth. Mm. Yeah, that's where G-Dubs probably has that yeah. out- good outlook is still young. Yeah. Even Richmond and West Coast's mm. youth I think is better than, um, than maybe someone like Collingwood. To be honest, yeah, better than like yeah, yeah. certainly Geelong, than Collingwood. Geelong had pretty good youth as well, but I, re- I rate Geelong's youth, even yeah. with Kelly going out and he was sort of lumped in that category. Even yeah, bit older. still got guys like Constable who'll probably come and get a regular game now mm. that Kelly's gone. Brian Myers and four picks under thirty six yeah. this year. So even guys like bloody Cockatoo, if he can get his health right, he's one that's disappeared. They still highly rate him. Yeah, you said Radagalia. Oh, no, I didn't say Radagalia, but yeah, Radagalia exactly. Yeah. He was the one I was trying to think of. Yeah, yeah, they've got a lot of I agree. pretty and good they're, youth. They're good drafters as yeah. well, so they'll make use of all these picks. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think we've come to a natural end of the True Footy Podcast 40. Thank you for tuning in. If you've watched it all the way this far, if you have, put the hashtag TwoFooty yeah. two footy, uh, in the comments and I'll, we'll give it a love heart. And I'm you. impressed if you lasted. Yeah, I have no idea. That's <laughs> what my girlfriend says to me. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in, guys. Um, Next draft, next podcast, we'll probably do a preview of the draft. I think. Yeah, we usually do that. And, preview um, and then a stream. We'll probably stream the draft. That was the plan. Yes, hundred percent. Good call. Good yeah. call. And then, uh, yeah, maybe you get a few Skype guests, like maybe the pair back at Charizard. Those guys, I want to start getting on the podcast soon. So, um, yeah, for now, thank you for watching, guys, and we'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cool. Cheers.